Hello and welcome to another interesting session in the series, Reflections, Stories to Recharge and Rejourney. Today, I'm extremely happy to share that this month we are celebrating one year completion of this wonderful program, which all of you have been a part of. We started it in last year in October and continuing to recharge, rejuvenate and inspire each other. And joining us on this special occasion today is Sister Judy Rich from Canada. Judy began her spiritual journey in 1992. In addition to serving as the center coordinator for the Brahma Kumari Center in Calgary, Judy works as a graphic designer and fitness instructor. Although both these areas of intensity and contemplation are seem to be incom incompatible, she has found that the opposite is true. They actually enhance each other. From childhood, Judy has an, had an interest in the bigger questions of life, we may say, and how the answers might contribute to a kinder world. Through the study of Raj Yoga, which is a spiritual practice, she not only found the answers, but also reawakened a capacity, peace and inner stability. And the topic for today's talk is, do you believe in you? And Judy is going to share about this beautiful question and how it can be, how it can develop self-confidence and self-trust, which, which is very necessary in today's life. So all this is, sounding very exciting and I can't wait to hear from Judy. So a very warm welcome, Judy, and it's over to you. Thank you so much, Lata, for such a beautiful introduction and big congratulations to Reflections on the occasion of celebrating your first anniversary. That's remarkable. So, self-confidence, when I think about um, the spiritual study or any spiritual journey, there's so many different ways it can be defined and what we hope to get out of it. But one of the big ones for me that really inspires me and keeps me going is this idea of healing the relationship with the self. Because if that's healthy, everything else will be healthy. And signs of a healthy relationship with the self is self-respect, self-trust, self-belief, self-confidence. And this was the one big question in life that seemed to, if you will, harass me from childhood. I remember, I don't know why I did this, but I enrolled myself into a drama class, which was my first, worst nightmare. I didn't like public speaking. And um, everything was fine when our essays or our, our assignments were things we could control and plan. But when we had to do improv, I just wanted to find a hole <laughs> to throw myself into. Improv was my worst nightmare, because of course, you just had to be out there and you couldn't plan. And so this type of feeling, feeling so anxious and insecure with the self really made me uncomfortable. And so spirituality identified, understood, and really nurtured, healed what's behind that feeling, which is the relationship with the self. So I use self-confidence, that is how I feel in these different situations, how I can respond to even surprising situations, I use self-confidence as my measure or litmus paper of my spiritual progress. And I get to use it very, very often because as a fitness instructor, you are a constantly in front. Um, people are looking to you for leadership, but just the nature of my life, there is never time to plan. Um, for what I'm going to do in a class. I rarely get to plan. So I literally show up with a complete blank slate 
they're thinking I've got a plan. <laughs> I don't. And it is improv, the thing I feared most, but now I embrace it. I really want to see, can I be spontaneous in these situations? Can I trust myself? Knowing we all have incredible capacities, but this lack of self-trust, this relationship with the self that's compromised is blocking those capacities, blocking us from doing what we love. Sometimes we call it ego, trying to value ourselves for all the wrong reasons. You know, this idea of I need to plan and control and I'm afraid of looking silly. I'm afraid of failing or falling. But when I'm teaching these fitness classes and I show up with no plan whatsoever and I'm in front of those souls and they look at me as if I have a plan, I just trust myself. That's the entire plan is that sense of self-trust. And in Raj Yoga, we are methodically taught how to cultivate that. I remember I'm a spiritual being. My number one fan, God, is really, really nourishing the capacities of the self. And in that state, I start to watch what just flows into the mind without effort. Ideas start to flow effortlessly. And quite a few years ago, I was given, I was sent a beautiful piece of artwork by another student of Raj Yoga who was quite young when she passed away. But before she did, she sent me a piece of artwork. And all she said was, I think this will resonate with you. I think that you will enjoy this. And it was absolutely beautiful. She was such a talented artist. But on the artwork, there was a phrase that had been printed, she had included. And what it said was, a healed heart never plans. So a healed heart never plans. And I, she totally got what was going on inside of me, my entire focus and objective in the spiritual practice, because a healed heart is completely free of any ego, valuing the self for all the right reasons, has that self-respect, self-confidence. So that improv, that spontaneity is actually quite natural. And one of the best stories for me around this was one year I was in the spiritual headquarters of the Brahma Kumaris. This is in Mount Abu, India. And there was a special program going on and Months earlier, the planning team had invited me and another soul who happens to be my sister um, to be part of the planning team. That was our understanding as we're part of the planning team. I don't know where along the way um, it was decided that I would be the MC. That I don't recall <laughs> being confirmed, but we arrived, we planned, we arrived at the headquarters. And they said, so as the MC, here's what's going to happen. I was a bit confused because I had not <laughs> remembered agreeing to that. But of course, you're happy to participate, cooperate. So I said, okay, but this is my worst nightmare about to happen, right? Because the program was such that we couldn't really plan it out. We had vaguely the pieces to happen but we couldn't plan it because so many of the pieces were moving targets. The program was gonna be about two hours long. And all I was told was as the MC, you can never leave the stage. <laughs> so anytime I turned to, to get help or to, they would just put their hands up and said, no, you cannot leave the stage. You have to keep the improv going. <laughs> There were points when I think I had to dance and I don't know, it was, it was very bizarre. So this went on for quite a while. And I remember that feeling of this is the measure of how much I have spiritually progressed. Am I able to not just do this, but to do it peacefully, 
and comfortably and with a sense of ease in the self and most of all with love because I love being with people. I love spirituality. These are all the things I love. I even love to dance. So it's things I love and how the lack of self-confidence was really denying me the opportunity to do the things I love. Spirit self-confidence, that spiritual journey fills us with the love so we can do these things without that anxiety or tension or nervousness or insecurity. We just flow. So I was out there on the stage for two hours. I don't even know what I was doing. There was no plan because again, it was moving parts. I remember at one point we had some of the senior teachers in the organization on the stage and I was told interview them. I didn't even know what the question was. I had to come up with one. And I didn't know what order, I didn't know anything. And at one point I'd walk by one of the seniors and I'd hear them whisper, invite so-and-so up. So they were telling me on, on the fly what to do. And I remember feeling so light, so much love, certainly felt I was surrounded by very loving souls and that was very helpful. But the sense of, is the relationship with the self healed? through the practice of experiencing myself to be a soul and eternal free being and through this beautiful love-filled connection with God, has the heart been healed? And it was such a, a beautiful, it was a dance. The whole thing was a dance of experiencing what that self-confidence feels like, what spirituality feels like in action, in responding to very unpredictable situations with so much self-respect. So that is my experience. There's many experiences, but so many opportunities to experience and measure. Has the heart been healed? That is, has the self-confidence returned to the soul? So we'll stop there and check in if there's any thoughts or questions anyone wants to share. Wonderful. Thanks, Judy. While you were uh, sharing that incident about you being on the stage and, uh, you know, uh, like the outside is calm, but the inside is like, okay, what next? What do we have to say? I, yeah. I can truly feel that. Uh, and it's really a test, as you said, uh, like, uh, or a measure of how much have I progressed, which you shared, like, what, your, what was your nightmare? <laughs> kind of you had to face it and not for a small time, for two hours or whatever the duration of the program was. So, uh, what steps do you think you took on this journey to kind of overcome this uh, little anxiety you had or lack of self-confidence you had? Did you put a plan or did it kind of on the way, you know, uh, strengthen you because of the spiritual practice or any suggestions that the viewers would I think step one for me was identifying this is the priority. That was really step one is that I felt for quality of life, you know, because souls are so bombarded with so many things that they feel are priorities. I have to do this. I have to do that. And this really moved up to priority number one. And there really was nothing after that. The feeling was, if the relationship with the self is not of high quality, I don't know how anything in life is going to be of high quality. And when I first stepped into a Raj Yoga Center, and uh, lesson one is, I am a soul. The moment I heard that, there was such a deep feeling of recognition, this is the way to cultivate self-respect, self-confidence. 
because it was not an awareness that really had anything to do with external validation. It was really discovering the independent value of the self. So once I identified this is the priority, drama swooped in <laughs> and nudged me into a Raj Yoga um, center. And that place provided the rest of the plan, which is to experience myself to be a soul and to develop a connection to what I call the eternal healing, the supreme soul. And the last step of the plan, which I think is so important and often neglected, is the integration of spirituality into day-to-day -day life. So often we meditate and we sit and, and then it kind of falls apart as we go through the day. So I am very intentional of integrating spirituality into my day-to-day -day life. That's how, otherwise I don't know how self-confidence. <laughs> so if I'm going to teach a fitness class, the priority is still the same, self-respect. It's not to deliver a good fitness class. It's can I sustain self-respect through this class? So I'm very intentional in the integration of spirituality into my day-to-day -day life. So uh, you mentioned self-respect. Uh, sometimes uh, it may get confusing uh, between, or you know, someone might get confused between self-respect and ego. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, they say there's a fine line. Yes. So what are your thoughts on that? I uh, agree. How do we know yeah. self-respect? Absolutely, yeah. Or even self-confidence is really connected to air. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I did track and field for a while and you have to be very self-confident. It often appears as arrogance. Um, and it really is an inner, uh, an inner uh, source. Where is the source of that sense of feeling good about the self coming from? Uh, very simple, and it's going to sound very cliched, but is it based on anything external or is it completely independent of everything external? So if one is moving along with ego, then extremely sensitive to what's going on around them. If there's ego, there's a lot of reactivity, a lot of control. And that's why improv was so frightening to me. But if it is self-respect, even in the face of mistakes, even in the face of looking silly, <laughs> um, still able to move along with such a sense of comfort with the cell. So the anxiety isn't there, the insecurity. So it's really checking, you know, where is that sense of self-value coming from? And Raj Yoga made it super easy. It said, when you think you're the image or the body, it's going to be ego. But when you are really in the experience of I am a soul, that is self-respect. So it made it very clear for me. That's, that's so beautiful. Uh, and I, as I'm listening to those words, you know, those, these words are also so beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure when we practice it, it definitely changes the way we feel. Uh, and as you have been following it for such a long time, practicing for such a long time, uh, it would be wonderful if you can uh, take our viewers on this uh, little experience for a few minutes. So Me if too. we could have a little meditation coming from you, that would be great. Thank you, Lata. I begin my journey by bringing my attention completely into this moment. That feeling that I'm about to meet a very, very important person. And I am. I'm about to meet myself. I had become a little distant from myself. A 
a little confused about who am I. I thought I was the physical package, the body, the things I do, the people I know, the possessions I have, the positions I hold. I thought that was all me. All those labels. But all those labels are constantly changing. And that placed me on a roller coaster of different emotions and feelings towards myself. I'm going to get off the roller coaster and place myself on the seat of what is true and eternal. Going deep inside, beyond all the labels, until I arrive at a single point, a single experience of the self. I am a soul, I am life itself, it's like arriving at the eye of a storm, stable, timeless, calm sense of sound. Everything outside around me will come and go. But me, the living being inside, I am my most precious possession. Within me are the most sought after resources in the entire world. If I become quiet, I can experience, feel the true nature of the self, the wonder of the self, the beauty of the self. I'm a source of peace, a source of kindness, love, benevolence, joy, light. That's me, this wonderful living being who is like a diamond so much more valuable. The more I touch that experience, the more it feels like I'm coming back home, returning to a comfortable state within the self. healing the heart, healing my relationship with myself. Om Shanti. Sister Judy, for that, for taking us on this beautiful journey. And I'm sure the 
viewers can practice more and more of such meditation commentaries and take benefit out of it because self confidence is such a beautiful quality to have it changes you in every way so thank you for sharing your wonderful stories and your wisdom with us tonight and uh, for our viewers who would like to know more about us please do visit our website www.primhakumaris.org.au there are many programs and events put up there there are various courses that we offer put up there so please do have a look and welcome to visit the nearest center so thank you very much once again it was a pleasure having you thank you so much lata and a big congratulations again to you and the team it's really lovely what you offer on reflection so congratulations thank you thank you everyone om shanti